Okay, so you saw that we got the 4L80 in and honestly everything went great. There was no you know issues or anything like that until I went and took it for a drive. I mean you saw in the driveway it went forward and backwards, but when I actually took it for a drive, um it didn't shift. Not even once. So it got really high in RPMs. I let it just go all the way up to like four or five thousand RPMs. Um maybe even six. I honestly I, the gauge wasn't working. I had the laptop hooked up, but I was I wasn't looking at that. I was more concerned with the fact that it wasn't shifting. Um and so I did a little bit of research and I come to the conclusion, uh, well, not just with research, but with the help of pulling this connector off. And what I found was, and I don't see any there, but there was a, there was a automatic transmission fluid on here, which means that it was leaking through basically not the same thing, but this would be what was inside the transmission. And so it was actually leaking through the, here and through here actually through here to out to here so and i was like well all right then and i was getting those errors for the shift solenoid which is probably because of this and because of this um i went ahead and got these uh solenoids and here is the new internal harness which is great because mine didn't have a temp sensor but this one actually comes with the temp sensor that's nice so i can't wait for that and uh yeah, so what we're going to do today is go ahead and pull all this stuff off, or well, not, you know, all the stuff that's on there already, and put on all this nice new stuff, and then rehook up the crossover, the adapter, or whatever you want to call it, the jumper harness, and fill her back up, because I went ahead and picked up a brand new uh, jug to hold transmission fluid in, because I had just put it in there. And it wasn't like it was a break-in period or anything like that. So that transmission fluid is still good. And it's going to go right back in there as soon as we're done. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so what we have here is the bottom of the 4L80. And what we're going to do is, is we're actually gonna pop this out, which means there's uh, some clips on the other side, which I'll show you those when we gotta do that. <clears throat> but I was gonna go over what we have here. So you have your shift solenoids right here, and I'm not exactly sure which one's which, but uh, you know, there's, these are your shift solenoids, basically. This is your temperature sensor. And then if we go all over here, uh, right here I believe is your force motor, or this one's your force motor, and this is your PWM motor. So obviously this is your filter, and uh, yeah, and then this is your something or another. But what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to pop this out. I thought I had to drop this whole valve body out. I'm so glad that that's not the case, but uh, yeah, like I said, let's go ahead and pop all these connections off, and then I'll show you the clips and how we're going to get that off. Okay, so this is what we have right here. <clears throat> so, I don't know if you can tell, I don't have my light on me, but uh, <clears throat> there is transmission fluid that is up inside there. It's right there, and it's coming through right there. There's a, there's a seal that's supposed to prevent it and it, it it's not working um and so what we have here is the brand new one and so what we're going to do is we're going to pop this one in i found that since you're going ahead and replacing this uh i used my knife and these two outer clips right here i just cut them off and that, that left me with these two right here and then i was able to just kind of close them off and just push it out and pry, well, pry with a screwdriver up again like in between it has a little spot that you can pry up in and it just came right on out so now we're going to put a little bit of transmission fluid on this here seal so that it you know slides in there nice and easily and then we can hook up all these nice connection connection yeah words they're hard but that's what we're going to do so just so you know this is what comes with it uh but yeah it all kind of just falls into place you know so let's do it okay 
So, what you got, like I said, these are the shift solenoids, and since I was getting errors, even if it was just the wiring harness, which, as you can see, I got it up in there, and I was talking about the little area that you have to pry on. You can see that little gap in between there, and yeah, it's pretty easy. So this is a T25 screw, so I'm gonna try to hold you with my, with my neck. Hold on, this is gonna be interesting. No, it does not work. So when you do this, there is fluid that's gonna come out. So we're gonna set this. Actually, we're just gonna go ahead and use this one over here because I didn't put that screw in yet. And I have the other one right down there and it's gonna be just a lot easier to do this. So you wanna lube up obviously the O-ring with a little bit of transmission fluid. That way, whenever you go in, it'll insert a lot easier and I'll get rid of that. So, like I said, there's gonna be some fluid come out, but I got the pan here, so it'll be all right. Yeah, like I said, a little bit comes out. So I just wanted you to be prepared. And so this is the old one. I mean, it looks like it's in great shape, but you know, hey, I should have did this already once before, but ah, now. It, all we gotta do now is put it back in. I, like, I'm so happy I didn't have to remove this this valve body. Um, so let's go ahead and pop, like I said, let's go ahead and pop the oil pan, or the, the yeah, I guess it is still a, a, an oil pan. Let's put that back on and then let's talk about the transmission cooler. Cause I think I had some issues with that too that I wanna go over with you as well. Okay, so the pan's back on. Uh, I will say always go with the OEM uh, pan gasket because if you try to use one of those cork or those stupid uh, rubber ones you can just guarantee that they're gonna leak and so just don't even use them just go with I mean if you still have the OEM one and it looks good it's reusable so just go ahead and use it and torque it down to this says a hundred to 120 inch pounds which translates to about uh, uh, 8 to 10 foot pounds so you know, it's not, it's not much. They're 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, so, I mean, if you just tighten them down to what you feel comfortable also, that'll work as well. Since we got, so I was talking about the transmission cooler and possibly having some pressure issues. Uh, if you recall, we were running the the 10A in line and now we have some 8A in line. And you see, I got some protection there from since it is kind of close to the exhaust. Uh, so this used to be mounted over on the frame rail on the other side outside of the frame rail but with the extra length I was able to put it over here because when I put those adapters there to go from 10 a.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, it was too too wide to fit where it originally was so uh, I went back to this location since I pretty much had it already mounted here at one point uh, so it should work pretty dang good Earl is fixed she shifts finally and it's time for us to take her on a, a nice drive see how everything's working out she sounds so much better. Um, and if you're wondering what I did to fix it, it was not the entire wiring harness. It was not the shift solenoids. Uh, in fact, what it ended up being was uh, the ISS, so, uh, the, the into input speed sensor. Ah, keep your words out, they're hard. hard words are hard. Um, so if you're wondering what the part number is, hang on, I'll get that for you. So that is the part number right there. I'll put it in the description as well. This is a genuine GM part. Uh, I mean, it's the best way to go. You know they're gonna work. Um, and so I put that in, I took it for a little ride. It shifted from first to second uh, in overdrive. So that means that it is working as it should. And, but I mean, I wanna see it shift all the way up into like fourth gear. So that's what we really need to find out, right? Um, so I just want to idle up the temp so I can make sure that the transmission is completely full and then we take her for a ride and see what happens, you know?
Well, there you go. So, uh, now it does shift, it goes through all the gears just fine. Sounds actually really amazing. Uh, she's still relearning her, her uh, fuel curve. And uh, actually, she sounds a lot better. You know what also helps, though? Um, typically, when you're doing stuff, is you tighten down all the bolts. Well, I had two of these. This one was loose, and that one down there was loose. And it actually had a little bit of a gap right here that it was actually pulling air in through. Like, yeah, yeah. So, hey, you know, look, you always make mistakes. And the point of these test drives is to find where you made a mistake. So uh, that's where one of them was. I'll find more. I'm sure there's more. Uh, but for right now, that's good. Uh, but let's go ahead and crank her up and see. Now that she's gone through, I've driven her for a while, and she's relearned all of her fuel curve and everything. And she actually sounds so much better. Like a lot of the noise that she had uh, was eliminated, and it may have been because it was bringing in that extra air, something like that. So let's let's crank her up. Sounds great. There's not been any burning any wires. You know, it's all it's all great. <laughs> no leaks. That was one of the main things was you know leaks. And there's not a single one. Transmission doesn't leak. Coolant doesn't leak. Oil doesn't leak. Uh, I did have a little bit of a leak on my brake fluid. If you remember, I had to cut the lines whenever I was doing all this stuff. And I was having some issues on the D cell, and it was uh, it was actually having a lean condition on D cell, and I've come to find out doing a bunch of bit of research. That these electronic throttle bodies tend to have that issue so i may be looking into going back with a actual uh cable oh, like this was gonna get made tell you, yeah yeah so uh yeah probably gonna go back with a throttle cable if that ends up being a problem going lean and having a lean condition all the time uh maybe i could i i don't know uh there's a few things we got take that are planned for earl god that smells so good that's such that's such a great smell uh, yes, but I think that that is actually going to do it for this video here. Uh, thank you guys for clicking on the video and I'll see you next time. Peace.